Okay, do you see it? Do you see the insanity? Everything is digital. Digital mixer, plugins. And then you see this. What the heck? I was sorting through some files and I found this box of cassettes. And I noticed when I'm looking through it that some of the titles say four track. So I thought it'd be great to convert those to digital. And a friend of mine still has this Yamaha four track, which he offered to lend me. I picked it up last night and it seems to work. I've uh, put a tape in there. I've listened to it. And um, some of the pots on here are kind of staticky and not so great, but it does work. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to hook this up to that Motu 8 Pre because I need, um, I think I'm going to use six inputs. And then that 8 Pre feeds into my Apollo Twin X through ADAT. And I'm going to use Logic to um, record these things. So I was just trying to figure out how to hook it up. And I'm looking at the back here. And it has separate outputs for each track. So there's um, there's four out outs and two stereo. And I think I'm going to hook up all six. And I'm going to use these kind of RCA jacks. They're all unbalanced outputs. So we'll see what the quality is like. But I've got quite a few of these cables. Uh, this is a stereo one from RCA to quarter inch. I'm hoping that the quality of that will do the trick and we'll see how it sounds. Just going to take a little while to hook up. The other thing it has here, which I, I don't think I'm going to use, is there's an auxiliary send and return because it had an effects loop. Back in the day when they made these, there was no built-in effects. This thing is from the early 1980s and it's uh, it's hilarious to be using one of these four tracks again, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, I have it all hooked up. See, so I've got six RCA jacks coming out of the back. I've plugged them all into the um, Motu 8 Pre. I set the inputs all to about 75%, not knowing exactly how loud this is going to be. And then... Um, <laughs> Not sure of the levels yet i'm gonna have to play around with that i've essentially set up inputs for the four individual channels so on um, the first channel i've set the input to the motu 8 pre channel one see i've got two three four five six seven and eight all lined up there so i've got one through four which are the four line outputs from the four track. And then I've got the stereo mix in left and right. It's kind of redundant, but I was just curious whether the stereo preamp in that Yamaha four track adds anything to the color or the mix. So I thought might as well capture all four at the same time. And remember, I'm routing that Motu through my Apollo Twin X via ADAT. And so if you look at console here, you can hear me talking in channel one, but I've got channels three through eight available. And if I play something, you'll see them. You can see all the meters moving and uh, there's signal here. So essentially what I would do is I kick off the tape and then I just hit record.
So there I have a bit of my recording. If you just want to hear the stereo out, I can just solo the last two. Or I can solo individual tracks. Remember, my intention here is I'm going to clean these up later. And what I've done is I've inserted a few plugins on the master. First of all, in order to get rid of the noise from the tape, I'm using the Waves NS1 plugin, and you can adjust the threshold of how much of the tape hiss you want to remove. It's pretty good. I'm just getting used to that. I've also got a multimeter installed. When it is playing, I can get a sense of the frequency response, um, and I can set goals in terms of the ceilings and adjustments. <laughs> What else have I got here? Um, I've got channel EQ, no surprise there. I haven't really messed around with the EQ all that much just yet, uh, but I have these on the master out. And then the last thing I've got is another plugin by Brainworks, which I was able to get for free from, I think, Plugin Alliance, and it's a mastering product. Um, <laughs> what it sounds like without anyway it gives you a sense my uh, plan there is to tweak these individual tracks in logic now that I've captured them from the four track and try and make them sound better hi friends it's Jeffy G. This was a really interesting experiment to convert these four track cassettes over to Logic. Uh, I learned a lot in doing the process, but it reminded me of how basic four track recording was. This device, this Yamaha four track, was released in 1985. I probably didn't get one until 1987, and it looks like I used it up until around 92 because there's a lot of dates on the tapes that I created during that time and it's just amazing to step back and look at how limited that four track was there's no compression there's no EQ well there's limited EQ there's just a treble and bass setting for each channel and there's really no way to edit audio you know Today, you just take it for granted with any digital audio workstation that you can not only record, but you can cut and paste and adjust the audio and change things in the arrange window. And something I noticed was that the tape speed control is a little slider on this. So you put the slider in the middle, it's not precise. You don't know exactly what the tape speed is or if the playback is at the same tempo and pitch that you originally recorded. There's no flex time or flex pitch. There's no auto-tune. Uh, interestingly, there's no MIDI to speak of. Even though MIDI was around at that point in time, it was being used to control synthesizers. There were lots of electronic bands and electronic music, but MIDI had not been incorporated into kind of the home studio setup the way it is today. So that was a huge eye-opener and an interesting trip down memory lane. Now the content also was surprising. Uh, you know, I look at the songs that I was writing back then and I definitely worked within the confines of a four track recorder. Most of them just have a drum machine, uh, guitar track, maybe bass and some keys and a couple vocal tracks. At most, you know, you recorded three tracks, you mix that down to one, and then you had three more tracks for a total of seven. 
uh, before you could before it would go, you know, second generation tape. And the tape hiss on this thing is terrible. I mean, I, you know, can't describe if you haven't listened to a four track cassette in 30 years and all of a sudden you put one in and listen to it, you're just shocked by how noisy some of these recordings are. Now, I tried to clean that stuff up in Logic with some plugins and some um, different tools, and I only had limited success. One of the problems is that back when you committed things to tape, reverb and delay was all recorded at the same time. So you were committed. And now to go back and try and, you know, delete the reverb or reduce the delay or get the delay in sync with the tempo of the song, it's impossible. It's, uh, there's only so much you can do. You can play around with the EQ a little bit and you can clean up the background noise, which is where I'm focusing my attention. You know, this isn't something you do every day. It's kind of a one-time effort to convert the old tapes that I had over to Logic. And I'm looking forward to listening to that and maybe making some songs out of ideas that I had, you know, 20 or 30 years ago. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you find this useful. And if you do, click on the subscribe button or click on like. And if you have any comments on converting from 4-track to Logic, put them in the comments section. I'll be happy to respond.